the Northern Illinois Huskies entering 2023. Well, they're coming off a little bit of a struggle year uh, from last season. They were only 3-9, and nine, a team that we're used to seeing uh, at least in the top half of the Mid-American Conference standings, at least when you take a look at overall, not necessarily in their own division. Usually in the top half of the Mid-American Conference overall, just not a team that really performed up to their own standard last season. And there were some factors for that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But there is a lot of returning talent. You get some nice transfers in to help boost the roster in certain places. They're very few and far between. So can we see this Husky team bounce back up towards the top, maybe even compete yet again for a Mid-American Conference title? Or is this going to be a team that continues to slide and maybe even takes even more of a step back from last season? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel, previewing, predicting all 133 FBS level college football teams this summer. Guys, it means I'm doing your favorite team. I've already done most of them. There's a video up on the channel for almost every team. We're so close to finishing it up. Make sure you guys stick around to hear my thoughts during the season as well. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, but there are more ways than that. You can help me support my channel. You're doing one right now by watching the video. Hey, you guys can do more by liking, commenting, sharing, and anything else that you guys are willing and able to do to help me support my channel. So let's talk about Northern Illinois here in 2023, but we got to know how we do things around here first. So we are going to go through a roster overview and look at who the team lost, who's coming back, and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class, as well as taking a look at the Husky 2023 football schedule, and we'll give it a game-by-game -game preview and prediction. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Northern Illinois Huskies here in 2023. Uh, let's start out with the quarterback room, which was really a driving factor to why this team struggled so much last season. Rocky Lombardi, I'm not positive it was injury, personal issues, but just did not play a whole lot last season. He is the figured starter entering 2023, but he only threw 75 passes, but his stat line in the limited sample size is really, really good. 645 yards, five touchdowns, only one pick on 66 uh, percent completion percentage. So it was up, up to Ethan Hampton and Nevin Kremaskoli last season, and they combined for uh, just shy of 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions uh, was their combined stat line last season. Last season, Kremaskoli 48 percent completion percentage, Hampton 59. So there are experience, experience options behind Rocky uh, Lombardi, but it really is up to Rocky. Rocky Lombardi. He was the best quarterback in the room last season. They're going to need him to be in 2023 to help elevate this team uh, back up towards the top of the Mid-American Conference, at least back in, into the top half. And as you see, that's where I've power ranked them as of right now. Let's take a look now at the running back room. Harrison Whaley was your leading rusher last season. 899 yards and five touchdowns. He has transferred off to another program. Uh, Jaden Credle is also gone off of this team. Now, Antonio Brown, he comes back and figures to, to be one of the Mid-American Conference's better running backs. 689 yards and seven touchdowns last season. Uh, led the team with 6.3 yards per carry on guys that had at least uh, 50 carries last season. Uh, and then when you take a look at who else is behind him, well, Justin Lynch comes in, and you also do get a transfer. He's coming over from uh, Iowa. Not quite sure what role he'll play, but Gavin Williams is in for this team. Uh, Husky team, so we'll see where he fits in to this running back stable. Let's take a look at the wide receiver room now. You lose another leader as Cole Tucker was your leading receiver from last season. 45 catches, 632 yards, four touchdowns. That's some good production. That's going to be gone out of that wide receiver room. You're also going to lose guys like Shamar Thornton and Fabian McCray as well. Now, Trayvon Rudolph, a star, a really good wide receiver for this team, did not play last year. So coming into 2023, he is by far and away their number one option there on this team. Uh, going to be a really solid uh, piece, really good player for the Huskies here in 2023. Uh, and you got some other guys behind them, some new depth. Kapker uh, Rutkowitz, apologies if I said the last name wrong, was the second leading receiver on this team last year. 432 yards and six touchdowns led the team with that six touchdown mark. Uh, and then Messiah Travis is coming back uh, as well. So those are your two leading receivers coming back. Of course, Thornton McCray didn't really mention them, their production a whole lot, but they were the third and fifth leading receivers on this team, second and third among wide receivers last season. So again, you got some pretty good production leaving, but some good production coming back. It's always nice to see Tray Trayvon Rudolph back on the field as well. Uh, tight end wise, Liam Sor Soragon is gone, but uh, one of your leaders in the wide receiver room, a top five receiver, fourth to be more specific, 180 yards, three touchdowns for Tristan's uh, for Tristan Tewes. Apologies if I said that last name wrong. I probably did. Don't judge me too harshly. And Miles Jorner, uh, who comes back as well. Now on the offensive line, 
you lose a big piece here in Marquez Cox. Brandon McKinnon is also gone. But Nolan Potter, Nolan Potter, my apologies, Evan Buss, John Champ will be coming back for the offensive line. So there's your offense for the Huskies. Let's take a look at the defense for Northern Illinois in 2023. When you talk about the defensive line, well, there are two pretty solid pass rushers that are going to be leaving this defense. That is Isaiah Green May with 33 tackles, three sacks, uh, and Michael Kennedy with 31 tackles, five and a half sacks from last season. So two pretty key pieces to the pass rush. Uh, Kennedy was actually the uh, sack leader for the defense last season. However, other than those two, pretty much everyone comes back. Your leading tackler among the defensive linemen, Thomas Rasheen comes back. Devontae O'Malley had five sacks last year. James Esther, Demon Taylor, Ivan Davis, Pierce Opong, Cade Haberman, and many more are going to be staples on the defensive line this year. Really good, really deep unit uh, for Thomas Hammock and company. He's the head coach. We'll talk more about the coaching staff here in a minute, at least mention their names. When you take a look at the linebacking room, Daverin Rayner, uh, that's a big loss to this linebacker room, was the second leading tackler on the team. 71 tackles, three and a half sacks for him last year. And you lose two more top five tacklers as well. Kyle Pugh and Nick Ratton are gone. So some pretty solid pieces in the linebacker room. Actually, not even pretty solid. More than that, pretty good pieces in this linebacker room are going to be gone for this team. However, Jaden Dolphin, uh, is a top five tackler who does come back. 51 tackles, couple passes defended for him last season. Nick Alvarado comes back. And then Keyshawn Artis is a transfer coming over from Virginia Tech that should give a nice boost to this linebacker room. Again, who knows what role he'll play in that room. Now let's talk about the defensive back room, right? Jordan White, he is going to be gone as well as Jordan Gandy and Eric Rogers uh, leaving the team as well. Eric Rogers actually led the team only 18 tackles, but four pass defended and led the team with two interceptions from last season. Uh, this is a secondary that is going to have to improve. It, it led a lot of teams in the uh, in the end zone too frequently last season. C.J. Brown, though, is your leading tackler coming back, 78 tackles, and a lot of other talent does come back in the secondary. Devin Lafayette, Javon Bird, Muhammad Jama, uh, Jashan Prophet, and Amarian Knight will be back for this Husky defense. Your head coach is Thomas Hammock. Your offensive coordinator is Eric Edsness, apologies if I said that last name wrong, and your defensive coordinator is Nick Benedetto. Now we take a look at the Husky football schedule for 2023. Hey, any game at home is going to be underlined. Well, any game on the road will be in italics or that slanted text. Any game you see in green is a game. I think the Huskies uh, are going to win pretty easily. Any game in yellow is a back and forth 50-50 type game, but the Huskies still going to be able to win, and red is a loss. Your non-conference schedule has a lot of difficult games on it, including two power conference games opponents one of which being the boston college golden eagles and i think you take a loss to the golden eagles or not golden eagles just eagles apologies to my fans in chestnut hill uh but gold has just ended up being one of the colors but the eagles there in chestnut hill emmett moorhead even though phil Dracovic is gone get to know that name he could be a really solid piece in the, uh at the quarterback position for uh the eagles there in Boston College. He's got a lot of nice pieces around him. Overall, that's a team that does need to improve a lot, but so is this Northern Illinois team here. Could be a close competitive game, but I still see Boston College, Emmett Moorhead being the difference maker. Uh, so the Eagles will walk away with a win, but Northern Illinois will win their first game against the Southern Illinois Salukis. Not a very great team out of the FCS ranks. So that's a team that Southern or, or that uh, Northern Illinois uh, will be able to be technically an in-state team even though they don't play at the same division of football. You got another power conference opponent. You got to go on the road to play in Lincoln at Nebraska. Uh, and I do think that is going to be a loss for this Husky team. This is the best team Matt Rule has had probably in his coaching career, but at the very least in year one uh, of wherever he's been, and either which at Temple and Baylor. This Nebraska roster is full of really good talent. It's just about changing the culture, flipping it uh, around out there in Lincoln. I do think Matt Rule is the right answer. The Huskers will be really solid this year. They will lose to North, or excuse me, they will beat Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois will lose to Nebraska on the road. But then you get to come back home, and this is a really tricky game for me. You got a home game against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Now, Tulsa is a very interesting team this year, and honestly, I could see them going really either way. I could see them exceeding expectations or really falling below. They got a new head coach, Kevin Wilson, the old Ohio State offensive coordinator, comes over to help coach this team. But when you take a look deeper, Tulsa's got uh, some really, really good talent. You got a pretty good option at quarterback, some really good pieces that – defensively as well this is going to be a fringe bowl game team and i think they play a little bit tougher style of football than northern 
Illinois will this season. Uh, so physicality, I think, might be the difference maker here. And I think Tulsa is going to end up winning that battle. Uh, so going on the road, beating a Northern Illinois team that I think is going to be much improved from uh, well, last season. Again, if Rocky Lombardi can stay healthy, Tavon, Tavon Rudolph is, is a big piece as well. Uh, but Northern Illinois, I do think, will end up dropping that game to Tulsa, which means they've lost two straight. And unfortunately, you're going to lose three straight here. Your MAC openers against what I believe to be the best team in the mid American Conference this season. This is the Toledo Rockets. Very few teams in the MAC are going to be able to slow down to Quan Finn and that offense. A lot of returning productions on a lot of returning production is on defense there as well. So Toledo going to be one of the better teams in the MAC, especially going on the road to play in the Glass Bowl. Going to be a hard game for the Huskies to win. Now, Akron beat this Husky team bad last season. I think Northern Illinois gets their events this year again. I think this team is not going to do as bad as they were last year. They're definitely going to uh, uh, at least win one game that they lost from last season, if not multiple of them. But uh, that's a game right there that I see the Huskies being able to pull out on the road uh, as Akron sits again towards the bottom of the Mid-American Conference. Okay, let's talk about the... Ohio Bobcat game up next. Even though you got this game at home, definitely could be a winnable game there if Rocky Lombardi gets going. But Ohio's going to have a very dynamic offense this season. O'Shawn Allison, the running back, is back from injury. Uh, you got the quarterback, Rourke, who is coming back. He has a lot of good weapons in the wide receiver room. And I think the defense is good enough to slow down Rocky Lombardi, this Northern Illinois uh, attack, whatever they're able to throw at it. And the Bobcats offense will be too much for this Husky defense to handle, even with all it returns in the secondary and defensive line. Uh, again, that secondary is going to have to improve massively in order to keep uh, Rourke in this Ohio offense out of the end zone. So that'll be a win for the Bobcats there. Now, you do get a home game against Eastern Michigan here as well. And Eastern Michigan, it, Eastern Michigan is going to be a really good team this season. They do have one of the best running backs in the country, in, or not in the country, uh, in the mid-American conference, and Samson Evans, some pretty good quarterback play, some good options on defense as well, but I think Northern Illinois has got what it takes to be able to slow down Samson Evans. Uh, that's going to be a, 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 Northern Illinois has a pretty good defensive front, and I think that defensive front is well equipped to be able to slow down a running back of Samson Evans' caliber uh, again northern illinois has got a lot of really good offensive pieces as well i think that's going to be a very close tight-knit game there uh, but i do see them slowing down samson evans with that uh, defensive line secondary will do what it needs to do it'll learn from games prior slow down the passing attack and uh, northern illinois will walk away with a win against eastern michigan so building momentum going into the bye week you get a road game on halloween but it's a very winnable game a game i actually think you do win against the central michigan chippewas now, this is a Central Michigan team that struggled a ton last season, and it could struggle again this year as well. You got a lot of key pieces leaving to the portal, uh, even I think some to the professional level. Uh, you got some really good caliber players that are leaving that team. So for as much as they struggled last year, could be an even bigger struggle here in 2023. So that is a win for Northern I Illinois. Uh, then you get to come back home. Again, still weekday action here in week 11. Uh, that will be a win for the Northern Illinois. Illinois Huskies ball state. I just don't think have has the defensive talent, especially in the secondary to be able to slow down Rocky Lombardi and what this Northern Illinois passing attack could be this season. So I do have that as a win for Northern Illinois there in week 11 week 12 is rolling around now and you got to face the Western Michigan Broncos. Now, when I take a look at this Western Michigan team and all they lost through the transfer portal, some very, very good players uh, leaving th that team. I still see them playing a brand of football to be competitive in the Mid-American Conference. And who knows, maybe they even surprise some people and pull out some wins in games they're not supposed to win this season. This may be one of them here going on the road to Northern uh, Illinois team that can be especially wounded in the secondary. However, I do think Northern Illinois well, equi well equipped to win this game. And again, Western Michigan did lose a lot through the transfer portal. So that could be a win for the Huskies. I do have it being a win. And then on the road against Kent State should be a win as well. Not a team there in Kent State that uh, has a lot of talent coming back. They lost a lot of pieces and they lost too much. Northern Illinois will win the game. So to recap very quickly, I do have seven and five. This team should see massive improvement if it can stay healthy. Rocky Lombardi, Trayvon Rudolph, and a lot of returners on defense 
will help this team bounce back and make a bowl game. But that's going to do it for my thoughts on the Huskies. Let me know yours in the comment section below. And as always, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye.